caballero. Es un hombre extraordinario. Me impresiona mucho. Pues, ¿sabes que Yo creo que no es tanto el físico, es más bien la personalidad que tiene y todo lo que proyecta. Ya me lo imagino con sus ojos blancos, un martini en una mano y un costoso habano en la otra. Provocativo. Atractivo. <risa> Stereophonic Sound Spectacular. Hello there, and welcome to the exciting world of hip. This is a new departure in language instruction. For English-speaking people who want to talk to and be understood by jazz musicians, hipsters, beatniks, juvenile delinquents, and the criminal fringe. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous allons, grâce à ce disque créé spécialement pour vous, essayer de tirer ensemble le maximum de qualité sonore de votre chaîne haute fidélité. Sit back, relax, and close your eyes. Found again. They are there. I see it again. Change one thing. Change one thing. Change everything. Change everything. Welcome to the live stream that starts soon, guys. Welcome, welcome. Let's see again the uh, dysfunction. What's up, guys? Yes, with my friend at Fratonal. Perfect, uh, we're live on uh, Rumble and YouTube, as usual, these video platform, but it seems that once again, Microsoft LinkedIn fell. It's incredible. Yeah, that's like this. Alright guys, so how are you doing today? I'm just uh, issuing this uh, user experience. Perfecto. Yeah, once again, Microsoft LinkedIn. Very, very bad user experience. Very, very bad integration. Let me lower the music and be right with you guys. We're gonna have this music in the background though. It's uh, from uh, my friend in Austin, Texas, Tritornia. It's episode 448 in their case, but today we are going to have here the uh, episode. Um, which one it is again? <laughs> it's 127. Is it 127? I'm all confused, guys. No, today it's 128. Why is it? Oh, it's 128. I'm all confused with all those numbers, but you're not the numbers. So I want to see awakening leaders not play into low level sensationalism and use all our vision, intelligence, and art loving to focus on the true evils and not the low level distractions designed to create greater separation of the masses known as peasant to the predator class oh that was inspired by my friend frank scusimari 
who was calling out who was calling out some leaders who people who pretends to be leaders and today i'd like to be very curious i'm very curious today i don't want to be judgmental i don't want you to judge me i don't want to judge you let's be curious together right and there's a survey out there that goes about questioning be curious not judgmental who said that you still have time to vote before we go into the show i would like to welcome new subscribers on rumble this is the place that's happening youtube and thanks to orange moon and um mahua mahua maho for your cafe and more if you'd like to do like them to send me some satoshi or some great coffee you have all the link in the description of this youtube and rumble video so welcome grab your coffee though take your time i don't see that much people here it's still the endless summer and this fall very warm fall here on the east coast of north america so i hope everybody is doing well and uh, today we have a um, very kind of a special friday program yes it's curiosity over judgment from manager to leader this is why i wrote uh, I, I read you uh, this very um, intro quote from frank scusimari one of my great dear colleagues that i love so much and um, if you'd like to uh, awake people to invite people to this renaissance because if you are listening to this transmission you are part of the renaissance and not just about agile it's about everything in our world to reclaim our place so share this video and uh once again especially on youtube because on rumble i've got not that much uh subscriber but more views because it's a more free platform is less algorithm but on youtube you need to help me if you don't want to send me a coffee or uh, some satoshi at least subscribe and hit the notification uh, that will help me go up and to the feed of everyone else and uh, so that will be really great it will be really great so i will really appreciate that if you could give me that help just to smash the like button as well it's always great share this video and everything and everything so 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 yes I'd like to start uh, the first segment of this uh, broadcasting, this live streaming today with uh, the Q&A from the Agile Boston chat, shall we? Because I believe that, um, I believe that um, it was kind of um, very interesting that we forget to record it. Uh, Mizik and Joseph didn't do this. That's okay. I redo it like on my last week. So if you'd like to see at least the content and the, uh, the, the, the the conversation or the the proposition that I made about Agile is the new waterfall. That was my talk at Agile Boston weekly event on the last Wednesday of September. You could still um, read it and listening to it both on the podcast of the Day Real Agile and here on YouTube and Rumble for you to watch. And I see once again, it's... Uh, 10 people watching on Rumble, so welcome Rumble people, say hi in the chat, just to show me who is listening, who is watching this folly of Coach AF, because yes, that's true, maybe you don't know me, but uh, I am Alexandre Frédéric Joly, your Coach AF, the world from Montreal, and uh, as I mentioned, I'd like to go at least, uh, Daniel, uh, the, send me uh, the chat of the people who had like, uh, common question and everything. So I'd like to do the first segment uh, talking about this Q&A. Uh, and I will just open the chat window here uh, to make sure that we'll be able to um, to see if there's an incoming message on what we are going to discuss. So it's growing up on, on, on Rumble. I see it like now it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Welcome Rumble people. Love me. Hit the like button. Help me show and the algorithm help me i'm a i'm a volunteer i'm not a professional youtuber but i'm a professional business agility consultant and great scrum master <coughs> sorry about that and um so let's do this shall we now um i'd like to be into the chat the chat of last two weeks uh, Agile Boston uh, with my talk and people had a couple of things to say so we're gonna do this together right 
And please tell me in the chat is the music in the background from Tritonia, Austin, Texas, is too loud. It doesn't seem to be. Okay. I will still lower it because sometimes I got the impression that. Here we go, like this. Just have a kind of slide background. Lounge. This is why we are called Agile Lounge. But when they talk at this radio show, I don't like it. So let's do this. All right. So without further ado, let's go to this uh, Q&A or commentary of <clears throat> what people had to say, uh, what people uh, had to interact, because not everybody was uh, at ease to show up. Oh, and let me do this too. All right then, let's do this. I'm sorry, I'm a bit like it's it's kind of a it was a great week. I don't know for you guys. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comment below if you love this week, especially if you are on the north eastern coast uh, of North America. We have an endless summer, but now I see from uh, my penthouse uh, the park view, uh, the color the color of autumn is starting. So it's gonna be nice if I could take the train from Montreal to New York City. Uh, the idea on that train, I love it. So let's uh, let's do this here, the chat room of Agile Boston, it's here. And of course, as usual, I have to user experience. Everything, it's about user experience, guys. Do you know that? It's very... Okay, it should be big enough now. Let me see it on my feedback. And I rumble, people, you're the, the majority right now listening. Uh, once again, LinkedIn didn't cancel me this time, but they didn't go out as promised. Uh, it seems to have something wrong with their server. It says 8 a.m., but I was live 12 Eastern. And uh, But Rumble, I love you. Thank you so much to be there because it's the most viewership right now without having so much subscriber. So please subscribe and hit the bell. So now let's go to, 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 to this chat. This chat, chat. Oh my goodness. I did something very wrong in French now. Sorry about that, guys. So that's um, that was the chat of people. So I won't go into uh, everything. I will say like if it's coming around. But for you guys who's watching on Rumble, don't hesitate to uh, go to the chat, the live chat, and even like subscribe and uh, send me some kind of I don't know how they call it on Rumble, but you could monetize even if you're a small Rumbler. Can I say Rumbler? I don't know. So should I do this like that though? No, doesn't doesn't really spotlight anyways. So, okay. So let's dive into what the community over at Agile Boston. Agile Boston, by the way, was found by Daniel Mizik and folks back in 2006 or 7. Correct me if I'm wrong. And they did, um, I believe that they did a great job of uh, this community because it's so much more fruitful and knowledgeable than any other Agile uh, chapter uh, that I been participating over the last 20 years of me being an agilista so um so i will um okay i'm eating food my camera doesn't work blah 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 and then this is an interesting thing here from um uh, eben jaffe i'm currently dealing with the struggle of not committing to a framework or not naming a framework oh that that's a great thing uh, eden eben eben sorry and uh, you, you receive a couple of likes from uh, Anne, Crea, Brea, and, and others. <clears throat> and um, because, yes, you'll struggle not committing to a framework or not naming a framework. You just have to keep it simple, like Jim I. Smith inviting us to do. So, if you like to be and do agile stuff, and help people understand these value and principle that we build product upon principles. Those principles are there to help us. So it's not the framework, it's not the system. Of course, a system that could help you create frameworks such as Scrum, because Scrum it's a really uh, complex adaptive systems, okay? That work great if you understand empirism and substantion. Then, so, so when, and you could create framework, but don't be rigid, it's not prescribed. It should be described. So, I will. I will. I don't know if you'll be able to to watch it again. Even probably, I will cut this part of the Q and A, and I will send it over to my friend 
at uh, Agile Boston for, for sharing a little bit because I'm trying to give you some tips and sharing knowledge and experience. And by my experience, I, I'm working with clients right now. I'm not struggling anymore because they don't want to hear anyway about a framework or, or system. They want to see if we are ready to deliver. It has nothing to do about any framework. So, and you don't have to name the framework. And, and sometimes with Scrum, we name the team and we name also the process that we built together. And then uh, what else do we have here? David and sense to everyone. True, tra, tra, T R O U G H. Help me here, tra, tra of delusion, delusion men. Okay, that's a comment from David. Eben, it's coming back to everyone. Reactant, okay, he, he liked uh, what David did. What else we do we have there? I'm, I'm doing it like authentically live. I'm, I, I didn't read it before. I just opened it before this morning to go live with you and uh, going away with that. Um, Cara Preso, the religion of Agile is it's getting sect or sectarial, yes. But that's a whole one, actually. Um, the whole crook like me, we discovered that there was a church and Scrum Alliance was a church, Scrum Org was a church, uh, probably back uh, in 2008, 2009. But uh, now the church is becoming a sect, yes, unfortunately. What else do we have here? So that was from Kara, Sarah, okay, Galina Komiskova, she's reacting, Meryl Lamont, imposition good word here okay yes daniel music and i we are calling out the imposition of even our agilist people who should be more in the openness and the invitation because the remedy to imposition it's op being open let people do for what and why we hire them and let them manage the thing and uh chun has reacted with 100% with imposition. It's a good word to describe it. And then Ed and Jeffy, the sect, he reacted to that. Okay, da da da. And now Agile Boston, I'm assuming that was Daniel uh, as the co host. Imagine a world where executives refuse to impose change and instead they look for coaches who know how to get it done without imposing, forcing, mandating. Yes! Like John Lennon is singing, I imagine all the people. So we could maybe create a song because we saw a lot of things from Queen, you know, uh, the, the Scrum Master Rhapsody. So why don't we, uh, Ryan, Ryan, it's an invitation. Help me write a song based on imagine with that great phrase of Daniel Manzik. Imagine a world where executive refuse to impose change. And instead, they look for coaches. Yeah, but anyways, we have to maybe rewrite it, but that's a good one. Um, then after uh, our mission, describing the open leadership network, advance the worldwide adoption of open patterns and practices informed by the principle and the values. Uh, yes, it's based on the invitation. So yes, go to openleadershipnetwork.org and you're going to find some greatness there. And then after that, what do we have? Or do I jump into the be curious, not judgmental? Uh, so the, what do we have here? i never seen. Don't want to miss anything. Now I send the link for Miro. Jim Lennington says what that no sorry what they really want is to get paid a lot of these issue okay sorry what they really want is to get paid a lot of these issue flow from the fact so I don't know if Jim was referring to the fact that I was mentioning at some point in the talk that the other agile consultant or agile coach call it whatever you want they seem not to be informing the leadership and they don't say anything about the wrong way to uh, help understand those um, complex adaptive systems such as Scrum, for instance, to build something and to be ready to deliver. So probably, yes, they just want to get paid. And of course, that's probably follow the money and you have your answer most of the time. And then after, it's really, very, really, really, could I? 
yeah doesn't make a big difference either uh from boston no one is telling okay hold on a second and now daniel mizik replied to no one is telling executives the naked truth about how agile does not work if it is force of course making decision is engaging of course when you have the decision rights when you could make decision when you could propose a solution and you have a conversation and a civil discourse you'll be more engaged and you'll be more um, uh, created so i've never seen high performing disengagement team me neither absolutely and this is the thing when you're a good coach that's what you show you create those open space and you make them safe enough to everyone to participate so this is the invitation we agreed on the rule of the game and then after you engage people by giving them a clarity of authorization which is one of the pattern that we teach at the open leadership network and we give them of course the decision rights these two things these two open patterns are much more powerful than any delegation from a leader and now we have here yuri uh sorry if i scrap your last name yuri it's ak tirsky ak -Tirsky? sorry about that i'm usually good with the name but now i'm not sure uh so yuri ak -Tirsky. He's telling us, I believe self-organize is not the same as self-manage. There is a slight difference. I agree with you. And uh, probably you and I, we are not, as they call, native English. Um, my mother tongue was um, French. I don't want to assume for yours, but it was. And that's why in French uh, and even Spanish that I know, it's a lot clearer. Like uh, self-organize, it's auto-gestion. Autogestion, it's about management of community of something broader and organizes is for the team. So that's why often in the Anglosphere, we hear that self-organize, it's for team and self-management, that will be something more political and societal. But again, I could be wrong because I'm just using my French uh, principle of these words to apply it. But you're quite right. A lot of people seems to misunderstood that a self-organized team is a team that will be able to have this clarity of authorization and decision rights as open pattern and self-manage well the business owner might want still to manage his company but uh, what about manager because we're going to see it in the second segment of this show about curiosity and judgmental there's a lot of part of creating from a manager to a leader and how do we do that with curiosity and all of these open pattern so great point yuri uh, Andrew Shelley says, for years, we have imposed Agile and Scrum upon people, thinking that it was better for them. The pure act of imposition crushes real agility. <laughs> Bravo, Andrew, you are part of the Renaissance, and I'm welcoming you to speak out loud, to advise clearly and everything. Yeah. The end does not justify the means, exactly. And very, very, very few leaders, uh, still uh, Andrew uh, speaking to us now, Andrew Shelley, very, very few leaders want self-management. Ah, yeah, that's right. And we're going to see it in the second segment. They want the benefits of real agile, of course, the transparency, efficiency, and productivity, happy teams and people, but not the messiness but there's no messiness in chaos what is chaotic is the fact that technology is going too fast for the time anyone could learn it and could catch up and customers changing his mind often so this is the chaos having a self-organized team it's to react to this chaos and i will say with my vuca pro on steroid we try to engage people in agreement of v for vision you for understanding each other to even start mitigating the Tuckman model of a self-organized team and everything and everything. So the messy part is not in Agile. If Agile is messy, it's because I believe people are not able to self-organize properly. And as Yuri mentioned, self-organize versus self-manage. I will believe that and the, and the alpha organization of this world right now, if they could at least let 
some R&D and very specific team like I did back in 1999. We were hiding doing Scrum to avoid scrutiny, but we were delivering the product faster than the classical project management uh, other teams. Uh, so that was self-organized, but we cannot self-manage in the sense that management, it's everything that the owner or at least the upper leadership will take care of. So maybe this is it. I don't know, but that's probably the difference we see it. So, but thank you, Andrew. Uh, you really part with these kind of comment and contribution. You, I see, I feel that you, you could be part of this Renaissance, uh, but just be careful about talking about messiness. Agile should be the antidote and the open leadership and the open pattern of business agility should be the antidote of any chaotic or VUCA, bad VUCA, uh, and we respond with a good VUCA, uh, which have a vision, understanding, uh, creation and communication, and of course, agility. Joanna Snow, uh, to everyone, she react uh, for years. Okay, she so reacts to Andrew. Mariel, the same. So you get a lot of vote, my friend, with this. And then someone else here, it's uh, Eben coming back, Eben Shafi. Uncovering means we don't know it yet or don't know all of it yet, admitting we don't have all the answers up front. Exactly. And sometimes when I start training or workshop, I always say like, I know one thing that I don't know anything. And together, we're gonna know it because I need to understand your context. So a great coach, a great facilitator will ask a lot of questions at first to make good proposal after that. And you will expect that the engagement of people Proposing, it's already a decision type of making, right? And uh, then after, of course, uh, Eben with this uncovering means we don't know it yet. Receive a lot of likes, of likes, and if I going further, oh, it's added, okay. And then Agile Boston through Daniel Mizik come back to the old topic is nuance, but two things are true. So probably he was talking about my topic of Agile is the new waterfall. So the old topic is nuance, but two things are true. Engagement is essential in making decision. No, engagement is essential and making decision is engaging. Therefore, to generate engagement, authorize at least some team level decision making. But I will say like, not just some, Daniel. Let's leave them the clarity of authorization from leadership with good boundaries management and apply all of these eight patterns working together in, in diverse contexts uh, to help them deliver the goods. And Shu Chun, she react again. And um, Agile Boston says they laid off. Oh yeah, because I was asking, is there any follow up eight months later about Capital One in the United States clearing uh, both the PMO, the classic project management office and the Agile transformation office. So PMO and ATO. We are clear about a thousand people across the board in the United States and probably Agile Boston was through Daniel Mezik reacting that they laid off huge number of Agile roles. But I remind you again, Daniel, there was also the uh, the PMs, the project manager as well, because they concentrate. And I think in the, in, in the, in the live event, I want to explain that. And then after um, Andrew Shelley come back with, oh, you react to the old topic, okay. Uh, Jim uh, LinkedIn, uh, you reacting again. Agile Boston to myself. It was a private message. Might be good to provide waterfall link. I'm not sure about this, but I had only one link was this a mirror when I describe it. Uh, and the waterfall link was two articles. One from Robert C. Martin, Okumbob, uh, and a paper of St. Paul University talking about the IID, incremental uh, iterative development. LinkedIn with the waterfall of Dr. Royce and I had also the original paper of 1970 something from Dr. Royce, the um, alleged creator of the waterfall system, but he created both actually back in the 70s for the DOD, the Department of Defense. So the links was there and <laughs> Muriel helped me about uh, the uh, memory, uh, the, 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 the animals on this planet with the shortest memory is the goldfish, this little goldfish. The link for the mirror was there. Joanna Snow, to everyone. I am a graduate student of Northeastern, very new to Agile and excited to learn. 
while I couldn't contribute much to the conversation, it was it was great being in a room with so many agile minds. Thank you for the insight. But thanks to you, and I remember your smile, Joanna, because you are on camera. Uh, and I really appreciate um, your interaction. And if you need any help, Joanna, uh, contact us, Daniel, myself, and others. We'll be uh, glad to help you in your journey of becoming a great Scrum Master, great product owner, or great Agilistas. And then after that, we have people reacting with clapping and everything. So that's the end. And uh, Kim Green says, thank you. Chun says, thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Thank you, Chun. Uh, Cara Presso, thanks, 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 thanks. All right, so we have it. So that was it for um, for the segment of. I, I needed to read it because last week when I when I redo my talk that I did at Agile Boston, I forget that part, and I think it was important. I know it took a couple of half an hour now, um, but it was important for me to do it, and I'm probably cut gonna cut this part and send it over um, Agile Boston community for them to do whatever they want with that. So now, uh, I would like to go into um, this uh, this topic. And once again, remember, subscribe and hit the bell. And again, I see the most viewership now, it's on Rumble. So welcome, Rumblers. Can I say Rumblers like this? S tell me I in the chat. Is there a chat here? No message yet. But I see about uh, 15 people's watching. Thank you so much to be here on this beautiful Friday, October the 6th. And by the way, and yes, and let's cut the um, let's cut the music here on because I want to show you a little uh, a little ad, a little advertising that I did. So for those of you who are in Montreal, you'll be able actually uh, to uh, join us at the Crew Collective and Cafe, the co-working space, beautiful space. Uh, it's about six, seven people. So DM me, give me a direct message or contact me through uh, any means that you could see from Rumble and, and YouTube or go, excuse me a second here. Actually, if you are in the Montreal area and you'd like to join us IRL in person, you could actually do, I still have it. No, I don't have it anymore. Oh, silly me, silly me, silly me, silly me. So in that case, you have to go there at agile-lounge.com and you have the contact form. So contact me to subscribe. It's limited to six places. We're going to be on the balcony of this magnificent place. I'm going to do the live streams of next week there, launching my new set of professional services. Then I'd like to show you a glimpse right now. So let's do this. Perfect. So let's do this, shall we? Next Friday the 13th, it will be a very special event, AFJ, launching his new professional services, above and beyond Agile and Business Agility. And yes, much more. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much to Steven Sasaido for this great mix that we used to play at the Mange Bois restaurant at Piccola Italia de Montreal. That was a great moment, still with Mondo Z production. And thank you, Chun, for this beautiful website that we're going to launch next Friday. Live here, live streaming on Rumble. 
and um, YouTube. I won't even say LinkedIn, even if it's programmed to LinkedIn, because as you saw today, uh, it was not streaming on LinkedIn. Let me see it again, but I, I doubt it. Uh, it seems to have a issue again, like like forever. So anyways, um, who cares of Microsoft LinkedIn, right? They have a very bad, very bad, very bad user experience. And sorry, no, don't don't start any rumor with my nose. It's the pollen allergy. And exactly, we are going to jump now in our subject. And maybe after the live streams, I'll cut this video in two. One for Agile Boston Q&A and one for this. Be curious, not judgmental. And for you, when I do this on my nose, I know some of you wrote to me that it's annoying. I could understand that even myself when I watch other uh, podcaster uh, scratching their face or whatever but August September I do my best not to sneeze in the microphone and everything and and sometimes it's 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 itchy because of those allergies so now I'm not doing cocaine I have someone wrote to me are you on coke because I am hyperactive I'm neurodivergent and they and I do this because of the pollen because if you watch properly when it's full summer or full winter, I don't do this. Only spring and fall because of that pollen seasonal allergy. So anyways, but it's exactly this. Why do we have a lack of a civil discourse in our society? Why do I just forget? I don't know if the noise, nobody talked to me in the chat. So you don't do my my director you every watcher every listener should be my director they should tell me in the chat if there's noise so thank you lucinda to tell me that you are hearing a background sound that was my ventilator so maybe that's why anyways so yes uh when i was speaking with some of my colleagues about <clears throat> all of these online debates and this kind of i want to be right you're wrong this and that and the lack of civil discourse the lack of real sane conversation and debate on the idea not at your personality and as i'm preparing something very new for the agile lounge uh, workshop um, in business agility and coaching in my coaching circle that i do with my coach and my mentees. Someone in my community says, like, oh, have you seen uh, Ted Lasso? I said, like, nah, not really. And because I've got a freebies on Apple TV, I start watching it. And um, first, there's a lot of goodness there for any coach out there who'd like to improve his skills. I believe that spending time watching it, first, you're going to laugh, you're going to cry. It's really crazy. I watched a couple of episodes yet. And so it's really entertaining, very nice. This British culture with American culture, it's great too. So what I'm going to say is, is um, it's really inspiring for any coach out there who want to improve his coaching leadership, want to improve his manner of communication and organizing. And what we talk with the open leadership and the open business agility patterns of, you know, inviting people and and um, giving them the clarity of authorization, giving them uh, the space to engage and make decisions and then uh, be engaged and, and create value. But on top of it, at some of the episode, he, he talked about this code that everybody is attributing to uh, Mr. Whitman. Is it to Mr. Whitman? Oh, big question here, right? Because we don't know. We don't know if it's to uh, Mr. Whitman. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just like, uh, I don't know. So tell me. So that's why I have this. Uh, who says be curious, not judgmental? Is it Ted Lasso? Is it Walt Whitman? Is it Camille Flammarion? Or it's an unknown author. So be my guess. It's for yours to discover, for yours to have the day. So basically, what I realize as a coach and also as a business consultant, uh, helping people uh, uncover those new ways of doing things, work and, and, and deliver value based on principles. And I'm not just talking about the Agile Manifesto for software development principles or any, no, principles and value that you create from your organization, from your product that will create the culture that you'd like to have 
uh, for you to it's it's your brand it's the entire brand it's 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 more than just a, a logo like this so like like my brand my brand yes there's a logo yes there's a script but we choose the the font especially the exact color the exact orange there's a meaning on all these details all right so and uh, what i realized as i said as a coach it's too often if we don't have the outcome of a civil discourse, it's because most of us, and I include myself sometimes, I make those mistakes, we are judgmental. We are judging what we see at first. Uh, the attention span is so low that we jump on conclusion. Uh, we want everything faster and we forget the smartness thing about this. And that's funny because with artificial intelligence, we want to, to do all the IoT, uh, Internet of Object, and all the objects should be smart. Uh, the smartphone, the smart microphone, the smart fridge, the smart car, the smart city even. But us, we are just becoming fast, 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 fast. So fast that we don't take time to stop. And I do believe that we need to stop. We need to stop, contemplate, observe. Because in contemplation, what do you do? You are in a silent moment. You observe. You contemplate what you see. And you do not try to judge others or judge what you see. You try to ask questions. And you remember in, in, my, in my podcast about four elements to decipher if you are dealing with a con artist, especially a fake agile coach, that's one of the thing is, if they don't ask question, that's a trigger. A good coach, a great coach, will ask question. Will ask question to understand your context, to meet you where you are. There's no judgment in there. Okay, and as I said, I'm not perfect. Sometimes, especially on the podcast, but on the podcast is not necessarily a consulting that I do. It's not. It's not, it's not reflecting exactly how I will do these things. But yes. That's the most probably common mistake that we do is we judge. We constantly judge. And, and here, I'd just like to, to read you a little thing. So, like, let's say that you are in the room with me. You are not watching this podcast. You are not listening to this podcast. You are with me having a coffee. Okay? And we have this conversation. It goes like this. I'm telling you, and you could reply in the comment or the chat. If you believe you are a mover and a shaker in the scene, and the agile scene, this is a must watch and a must read. This is how I measure who is real and who is a charlatan. I want us to recognize that redemption is real and we can be serving humanity with human agency through greater personal responsibility, love, forgiveness, forgiveness, sorry, and compassion. I want us to put ourselves in the shoes of people going through difficult moments, instead of jumping on the bandwagon of cancel culture, cancel ideas before any due process, or saying like my framework is better than yours, and Scrum doesn't work because this and that. I want to see greater maturity and leadership from all of us of the so-called agile leaders. Or else, let's just drop all the labels and say what we really are. People pretending to be agile, yet using our charisma, our influence, our power and nice words or sentiment to influence the community and our client and just to get paid. It's reflecting one of the common in the Agile Boston Q&A, right? From Mr. Shenley, if I remember. He was saying like they just want to get paid. Exactly. That's, what, that's my reflection here. But really, not truly seeing the world and the world of work that we try to transform from a real Agile as an adjective lens Okay, but on one of a personal attainment of materiality and influentiality. 
this egoistic part, this power control part. I got the information, I keep it for me instead of sharing it and really collaborating. And I'm going to judge you because I have to accuse you of something instead of being curious and asking questions. I want to see. It's still me, the coach, talking to another coach in a cafe. I want to see us be able to witness a train crash of safe without judgment and attacked on innocent people and scrum master taking in their Jira tickets before going through all the facts. That safe is not good. I want to see us educate the public of the truly heinous and despicable things happening that we are not talking about because it is too grotesque or impossible to wrap our heads around the fact that maybe we are not listening to our customer, the most important person in the entire organization or enterprise. Because without customer, you don't have your fracking business. So, and when I say I want to see us educate the public, it goes, the public include leadership and the C-level. I want to talk about, sorry about that, I was distracted. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, okay, sorry. I want to talk about compromise elected board member of the Swadisan body of knowledge that weakening our self-organized teams in our community of practice. And I would like to talk about compromise firm, the big firm that do the same to our, they transform our community into an industry, an agile industrial complex. <coughs> for another vision, for other way of life, literally other way of life, other way of inviting and agree together and consulting. I want to see the leaders of our agile culture become leaders for real and not just a couple of I know it all and too much to be true on a balcony of a Muppet show. This is not aim at anyone, what I'm saying right now, but it's a call to greater consciousness, morality, responsibility, and leadership with unbiasedly, instead of harvesting power from other people's downfall, just seems ungenuine from who we are, the Agilista, and lacked integrity somehow in what we propose with the Agile value and principle. I want us, the Agile community, to use greater intelligence and also restraint. It is never what is being shown to us that is the distraction. It is always what is happening behind or as the consequences. And by now, I do expect agile leaders to know better and be leading with greater wisdom, maturity, and intuition for real leadership of what is beyond our own noses. With all due respect. So yes. Stop judging. Be curious. Being curious is one of the four elements of identifying a great consultant, a great coach who will ask questions before proposing anything. And when you are at the stage of proposing solution or proposing value, you better invite those who could help you do so within the organization. Because remember, 
as a consultant, you're there for a moment. It's like Elvis going to Las Vegas. When Elvis leaves the building, the Stardust Hotel, the show must go on at Stardust. Is there another singer that could take over? Did you teach this other singer how to engage your audience? So, you know, for me, um, there's no great secret here. Huh? <clears throat> It's, um, and I'd like to end this kind of judgment over, uh, excuse me, curiosity over judgment that should help us, what I'm calling out here, huh? for a greater maturity of our Agile movement, for a greater educational of the public, including the sea level Uh, to talk about all of those compromises, not necessarily denouncing the agile industrial complex. We've been doing this. I've been doing this for, for years and years. Now I'd like to be in a renaissance flowing of ideas and building something from scratch. I don't even want to renovate, to revolutionize, to go beyond, to modernize. No. I do believe this is a renaissance. We've been into the dark times since 2010. The effort of Mike Beadle with Enterprise Scrum were unfortunately in vain. And now the effort of this agile movement is catapulting into this type of all BS and all these control and all these judgment. So what do we do from there? Shall we inspire ourselves with Camille Flammarion, this great French astronomer. Because yes, he was an astronomer, an author, and a believer in physics phenomenon. He was a faithful fan. I'm a faithful fan of his work, especially as a dropout of astrophysics myself. Because the work created um, upon Flammarion vision of the universe. Huh? You probably saw this engraving. Let me... Uh, Show you here, could I? Now, this is really small, though. Uh, hold on a second. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'd like to show you. Flammarion. This is the Beyond Universe uh, type of thing, you know? Here we go. Let me... Let me share it. To you, for those who are watching on Rumble and YouTube, I'm going to Here we go. See it now? Is it big enough? Could I zoom it? No, it doesn't make... Well, I cannot zoom it. So you, you probably saw it before, right? So Camille Flammarion, the astronomer, This is uh, an artwork interpretation of, of what he actually um, perceived the world. So there's one wall inner, it's inside, it's inner ourself, inner our realm of perception with a lot of judgment. And if you're curious enough, you would like to go above and, uh, and beyond the boundaries, the boundaries of the skies in terms of an astronomer. And if you're an astrophysic, you're going to go beyond the boundaries of both cosmology, which is the greater, biggest thing of the physics, and the atomic physics and at the, at the greater level, cosmology, with the universe and everything. And you're going to try to also uh, cross the Rubicon of the Planck level at the quantum physics. And Nassim Aramain, I love him because he's our new Flammarion in terms of being curious enough to propose the uni unified science. You know? So I love this picture uh, of Flammarion. This is Flammarion here uh, being curious, going outside of the box. And you will say like, but hey, Coach F, What the, what the heck are you talking about? What is, does have to do with business agility and Scrum and Agile? So once again, you didn't connect the dot. 
Be curious, ask questions, but go outside of the box as well. Go beyond your own nose and reality. That's my invitation. I'd like you to engage in those reflections. Because being agile is not receiving orders, even from the business owner. It's to listen to the SME that surround you and that held that organization producing goods, services, solution, what have you. It's all about the team first. And if your team is really engaged, they will produce quality product, they will produce quality solution and services. And thus, your customer will be happy. And if your customer are happy, they will come back. If they come back, your return on investment will be fruitful and you will have a company that lasts. Is it that simple? It is that simple. Some people with control, not power, they try to have people fight within the judgmental, within the division and conquer, just to keep their control, but they don't have any power. Because a manager doesn't have power. He just has control. That transforms into a perceived power, but he just has control in common. And the worst is not the manager who is not a leader. It's all of us who comply, who acquiescence to this common and control. We just have to say no. We just have to show up with our value. I'm inviting you to reflect on it again. We need to stop. We need to contemplate. We need to ask ourselves some question. We need to cross the Rubicon. But not like a warrior army, but with a conscious leadership way of wanting to do not the right or the wrong thing, but what's right at the moment we uncover information to propose ways. Are you with me on this? If yes, Smash the like on this video. And please, I invite you to comment your own reflection. Like they did at Agile Boston when I was presenting Agile is the New Waterfall. Oh, very shocking title. Now today, I'm inviting you to stop playing the game of the decipher and the fake. To stop playing the game of compliance and act as who you are, a business consultant, a business coach. If you are facing a client who doesn't want to be coach, what the fuck are you doing there? You're just paying your mortgage? Okay, I couldn't understand that. As I mentioned in my invitation to you, I couldn't understand that you follow the money. So even if you don't like, the scale agile framework you're going to do this even if you're not an engineer you're going to improvise yourself as an rtm release train manager instead of release train engineer because you could be sued and the company could be sued too and then you're going to start eh, do whatever it takes for your means but not for the greater good of our practices of our pattern and even for the customer of our customer so that's the big problem here so this is why a lot of people, and, and by the way, in the last Scrum beer, I was explaining the Meta Scrum, I try, some sort of. And, uh, and someone that I really uh, appreciate, usually uh, a more classical project manager who call himself an agile project manager, it's okay. Could do the fuck you want, you know. But instead of asking questions and be curious, he disappoints me with an affirmation, really judgmental, about, oh, this is fairy tale, doesn't work in the real world. Really? And I automatically respond to him, like, with my experience with Mike Beadle and what Jeff Chatelain shared and the organization Nuance and Massachusetts and others, like, I said, we have at least 250 and over organization in North America, including 
FCC here in Canada that did try this Scrum at scale and Meta Scrum. And again, I'm not advocating that safe is bad and I want to be right or Scrum at scale is better or Enterprise Scrum is better, which is actually for Enterprise Scrum. I do believe that it's so much agnostic and it's so much configurable in many ways that I do believe that yes, uh, Enterprise Scrum is is better and more more even smarter. But again, maybe it is it, is not going to to suit your your context or your culture. So that we have to be careful about this. But anyways, I'm disgracing. The thing is, more you are in the perception, reaction, and judgment, and you acquiesce to the control, instead of unleashing the power of great leadership that will invite their people to engage them, to make decisions for the greater good of the survival or the thriving, let's thrive instead of survive, of their company, restaurant, what have you. So that's my message for this weekend on this 128 episode of the Friday Live Agile that I might be cutting in two smaller episodes, the Agile Boston Q&A that I forget to do last week and this part of coach f inviting you inviting you to be curious stop judging others like when i do this it's not because i'm on cocaine <laughs> it's because i've got seasonal allergy i know it could be annoying for some viewers for those who are listening you don't see it thank you god but that's that so rumble again you want you want against YouTube and LinkedIn. We didn't go live for some reason, obscure reason that I still don't know. And could you imagine I'm paying a premium right now? And since I'm doing this, I got issue with my live stream. So that's why I'm anyway. So next Friday, next Friday, 12 noon Eastern time. Yours truly will be at the crew collective. Once again, you could go to my, uh, one of my main website, agile-launch.com. Go to the contact page and six people, if you are from Montreal, Quebec, you'll be able to register and join us. You have to register because it's it's not like uh, first come, first serve. You have to be on the guest list to join me at the live stream. I'm going to do the podcast, the Friday Live Agile, but a special event for launching my new uh, professional services. Make it happen uh, once again. So I'm really, really uh, glad to inviting you to this and for the people who are not in Montreal but you are all around the world listening to me and again thank you to uh, Scrum Mistress and Oslo uh, Norway and Matt Chao and all of those who sent me some Bitcoin this week and some coffee as well and yes the merch is coming the merch is coming you'll be able to have especially the scrum beer mug i know a lot of people want the scrum beer mug you'll have it so thank you very much for listening i hope you've learned something and i hope you'll teach me also things because i'd like i'm eager to learn from you in the comment below and on that as always remember who you really are as a human being you are wonderful you are powerful and you are free to be whoever you want it to be and to do whatever you want it to do in respect of one another. Renaissance. I love you guys. I love you girls. And I love you non-binary people. Have an happy weekend for the Canucks. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your turkey. And see you next week on Friday the 13th. Cheers. Cheers.